Let me call the meeting to order. Um, let's see, you really goofed me up with this agenda. No, that's fine. Thanks for it. So, um, let's see here. Public comment, we went through that for this. We're down here now to the Pledge of Allegiance. You take roll call first? No. Okay, all right. Then I'm, then I'm fine. You just goofed me up, sorry. Okay, um, Danny, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? State standing for the invocation. Will you join me in prayer? <laughs> God, this is a season for giving thanks. And still, we offer our thanks amid the horror of seeing communities throughout California devastated by wildfires. We pray for these sister communities and ask that your healing and peace be present with all that have lost life and home, a sense of place and identity. There is so much for which we are grateful. Our Ripon community has experienced your blessing. We thank you for the schools where our children learn about life and gain wisdom for living. We thank you for the agriculture all around us that sustains us and our community. We thank you for all who have served in the armed forces to fight injustice, to secure freedom and rights for many. We thank you for our city, for all who work to make our city a place of peace and safety we thank you for fire and police and emergency personnel. May the gifts we've received from you be used to bring Ripon to life, flourishing with all that is good and fair and right. And finally, we thank you for our mayor and this city council. Grant them all that they need to do the work to which they've been appointed. Grant them wisdom to govern effectively. Grant them insight to discern true needs Grant them courage to act for what is right. Grant them the harmony to work together. Bless them in today's agenda and renew us all with the strength of your presence as we join together to make Ripon into a community of respect and joy. We ask this confident in your goodness and love as shown in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Councilmember Dean Euchre. Here. Daniel DeGraff. Here. Dean Parks. Here. Vice Mayor Leo Zuber. Here. Mayor Mike Restuccia. Present. Okay. Public discussion. If there's anything that somebody would like to bring up, I'm not seeing many people in the audience, that's not on the agenda, please come up. If not, uh, we'll talk about it at the time that it's on the agenda. Seeing nobody. Uh, we'll go through public discussion. Approval of minutes of the regular meeting October 9th, 2018. I'll move to approve. Second. We have a motion second. All in favor? Oh. Did you get that? It's not showing up. Not here. There it is. Didn't, didn't take it. Yeah, right there. Oh, it says away. away. Everybody's away. Should we do it again? Okay. We need the mover and the seconder. Okay, there you go. Welcome. We just unlocked the doors. Oh, we did? Oh. oh. Sorry about that. You missed all the exciting stuff. <laughs> okay. So we had the public discussion. We had our um, minutes. Yeah, I will. We had our um, roll call. So what we did go through, and I was reminded I should do it, is the public discussion. Anybody in the audience that would like to bring something up under public discussion that's not on the agenda, please come up to the mic, state your name and address, and we'll address it. If it's on the agenda, we'll address it at that time. Okay? Okay, seeing nobody, we'll 
Now move on again to approval of the agenda as posted or amended. This is where we pull items, right? Yep. I have three. I had more, but Dean talked me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that for a minute. Um, 1.2E, 1.4A, and 1.4C. And I have 1.1A, 1.4B, and 1.4F. <clears throat> Anything else? 1.1A, 1.4B, 1.4F. I'm going to get confused, oh, trust okay. me. Okay, no, there we go, perfect. Okay, anything else? Okay, so now we need uh, an approval good. of I'll the agenda. to approve the agenda as amended. Amended. modified. Okay, waiting for Jake Parks. Okay. So now we go to approval of the consent calendar. As amended. Okay. Now we go to, I guess, 1.1A first. That's mine. Mm -hmm. yep. So the reason I brought this up, and I, I got an answer earlier, but if you take a look at the um, the invoice, it says that we've received 49573 to date. But you show we collected 81609. You indicated that there's looks like there's a discrepancy, but it's a timing issue, correct? That's correct. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. So that takes care of that. 1.2E. My question about this one is it, it seems like these guys are on the agenda every nice. month. <laughs> so. A, are they ever going to get finished? B, how much have we spent on them so far? So um, WGR is performing our, our stormwater um, obligations under the state permit. Um, they're helping us or assisting us with compliance with the permit. So it's something that is going to be ongoing um, unless we either hire staff to do those tasks. Um, but the state is continually putting out um, regulation <coughs> that we've got to meet and they're they're just assisting us uh, with that process um, to date over the last two years under this contract we've spent twenty six thousand um, dollars with them to assist us with, with compliance and is that general fund money <laughs> so is this permit is this permitting a process rather than you do something you get a permit and then you move on <laughs> yeah so it's um being a city uh we we're and and being that we discharge our stormwater to the river uh the state has put a, a lot of restrictions on us um so we have to do continual monitoring uh we have to do inspections on uh, construction projects it's, it's just kind of an ongoing process um we have to do testing. Uh, we have to uh, oversee the private development projects. Uh, so it's, it's an ongoing process that we have to remain in compliance with. Okay. So it's going to be there. It's, it's going to be there. It's going to be there for yeah, forever basically. Uh, we're in year five <laughs> of the, the previous <laughs> permit. Um, year six is next year, and they're already working on the, the next phase of the permit. Or the new permit, which which is expected to come out to, uh, toward the end of next year. So. That's only going to get better. Or <laughs> worse. Ex exactly. It only goes better one direction. Better for them, worse for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, we'll take them. We'll approve them all at one time. One point four A. Is that me? Yes, sir. This one of the transfers is like $646,000 to something capital fund. Is it general fund, department, whatever? I can't. I didn't write it down. That's why I... There were three basic places that were sending the money. Part of it's going to street and roads. Part of it is going to that list of capital 
things for the various departments. And then there's a chunk, like 646,000, and it's like the general fund department capital fund or something. That's right. What is that? So that's the fund that is set up that, um, that we pay different capital items um, for the general fund department. So we buy police cars out of there, we buy um, computers out of there, uh, different capital items for um, the general fund departments. <laughs> this is where I get confused because that list, that's what's on it, is a couple of police cars and five computers and three of these and four of those and six of those. And so this extra money is set aside for more expenses like that? Right, so normally during the budgeting process, um, all, all the departments put in their requests. Normally those are limited to the, uh, the recurring items that we need to keep buying. You know, we, we've been buying two police cars a year, I think it's seven computers. Uh, we've been replacing, or previously we had been replacing so many of the, uh, the cameras we have around town. Uh, so that's what we budget for, and that's how we pay for them out of the general fund, department capital fund. That's how we pay how for How much is in there now? Uh, I don't recall how much is in there now. Well, you can tell. So in other words, but it's more than $650,000. Yeah, it's more. It, it's more. That's, this is what's going to be transferred over there. Um, with the surplus, what I went back to the department heads and said, um, if there's additional items you need beyond what was budgeted, please let me know. And then that's the list you have here that that total of $233,000. So okay. that was uh, above the, their budgeted items that they requested. So is the 646,000 spent? In it's other not. words, are they are the departments assuming now we have $646,000 that we can buy stuff with? So it, it goes into that fund. So it's as part of next year's budget when we go through the 1920 budget cycle, they'll put in requests again. Uh, for each of their departments, and then we include those in the budget, and they're paid for out of this fund. Okay, so we I'm going to try to remember that when we do the budget next year, because I want to see where where that goes. Yeah, and I can show you on, on this year's budget okay. too, if you want to come by. I could I could walk All you right. through how we how we do. Because to me, it, it's like it's a duplication. Yeah. And okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, was 1.4A. 1.4B is mine. Huh? Oh, did I have that one? You, you told me 1.4A. Well, okay, I screwed up. Okay, so one point, okay, that was 1.3A. Yeah. It did look right, but okay, so not 1.4A, 1.3A. We got that taken care of. Now we go to 1.4B. The reason I pulled that and I got a clarification, but just that anybody that looks at it, the treasurer's report shows we have 40 million, 415. And by the way, Dan, my notes didn't show up on here because I had all my notes laid out. So there's quirk. <clears throat> anyway, but our treasurer's report show there's 40 million, five something. So there's $169,000 difference between our investment policy and what our treasury report says. And do you want to explain so everybody understands that, please? Pretty simple, but. Sure. Our Bank of Stockton um, operating dollars, if you will, are not included in our investments, and but it's all one account, and it sweeps. So if there's a large deposit or a large withdrawal on the last day of the month, it hasn't hit that investment account yet, and so it's either mis a little understated or overstated. So it's kind of in transit. Yes. All right. Thank you. I mean, it's not a lot of dollars, but still, it looked like it was missing. Okay, so that was 1.4B, 1.4C. This one is right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, this is authorizing, authorizing a notice of completion, but when I looked at the payment that's earlier on in the consent, there's still like $9,000 left in the contract. Is that for work? that's been done but has been paid or because I, when I first saw it, I said, how can we issue a notice of completion when there's still apparently work to be done? Yeah, so essentially that was, those are two items that were, were not needed to be performed. Um, there was a fire hydrant that did not need to be relocated um, and a small portion of a retaining wall that did not need to be constructed um, with one of the handicap ramps. So there were, there were some field changes so with that So the project ramp. cost us $9,000 less than Correct. what we thought. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. 
take it where you can get it. Okay, now I've got 1.4F. And the only reason I pulled 1.4F, oh, I gotta find it now. Is this the notice that yeah. you're making? Yeah, the only reason I, I pulled that was, um, I understand we're sending it to Washington, D.C. because it's a federal issue, but I just suggested maybe we send it to our local representatives like um, Assemblyman Floor and Senator Galjani, just so they're aware of what our issues are as well, because if maybe they know enough cities that are also objecting, they can help us out. That's all, just the CC. Yeah. But didn't that, I think I read someplace where the state of California passed a law that says you can't do what this federal rulemaking is going to do. That I'm not aware of. I read it because I had the same question at first, but some place I read some that really that, that <laughs> this whole state is actually <coughs> will be violating this rule if it goes through because the legislature did pass a law that basically says local communities will control all this kind of stuff, knowing that the feds were going to do this, that, you know, right, California right now, they say A, we say B. Yeah, and California passed their own right. rules and regulations recently. It's so how it's going to work out, I don't know. Trump's but administration on it. Yeah. You, you could reach out to uh, uh, Flora's office and get some more information about that. Oh, I didn't read that. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the state's actually giving us a little bit of control back? Yeah, but only because only they didn't spite. want the feds to have yeah. it. <laughs> so we need some more fed interaction. Yeah. Apparently federal is a okay. thing now. So let's find out, but, but again, if we do send it because there's conflict, yeah, I, 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 think, I think it'd be fine. Okay, so that's the end of consent calendar. We do have a couple of proclamations. Wait, we gotta approve them one oh, time. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. We need to approve, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list them out. 1.1A, 1.4B. 1.4F, 1.2E, 1. Point, I think that's three. Well, a, it was already approved, so you still got to put the number in there. Yeah, yeah. right. 1.3A and 1.4C. I'll move to approve the uh, items pulled from the consent calendar. Okay. It's not letting me go in. Nope, not there. No, no. There you go. There it is. Okay, hold on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now we have proclamations. So we have a proclamation for National Homeless Youth Awareness and November National Caregiver Appreciation Month. So first we will do the Homeless and Women Center. We've seen you here before. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Oh, they want us in the middle. Not to block anybody. So let's get in front of my place because they don't want to block anybody. So with the Ripon City Council is, is providing a proclamation of the Women's Center Youth and Family Services National Homeless Youth Awareness Month. Without reading a lot of it to you, what it's about is working together with women and children and runaway and homeless youth that are young people that are deeply in need of resources and opportunities and as I mentioned before, I applaud you for this. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of areas like yours through the different community, those different boards that I sit on, and it's amazing what you all do and provide. I mean, it just, you all have the same vision to help people, and I've told you before, you know, you, it, you've got everybody's hearts and minds, and uh, it's gotta be really difficult to do what you do, and, and uh, I applaud you for it, because I would think that you would go home in tears sometimes, but, you know, somebody does it, and we're very proud and happy for you. So thank you so much once again for what you do. Appreciate it. And if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you. I do want to tell you it's an honor to accept this. Thank you guys again. Um, like you've mentioned, runaway and homeless youth are young people who are deeply in need of resources and opportunities in our area, but they do not always have access to that. In San Joaquin County, there is an estimated 100 youth who are homeless every night, coming from every life circumstances and sharing an experience of home environments that are unsafe and unhealthy for them. Last year alone, Women, Youth, and Family Services provided shelter to 101 youth at our safe house, which is San Joaquin's only emergency shelter for children, received 264 calls at our 24-hour helpline from youth, provided shelter to 26 youth and young adults, seven children, 
at Opportunity House, which is the county's primary transitional living program, and provided services to 111 youth and 9,360 meals throughout the drop-in center that we have. So I do encourage everybody to visit our website when you get a chance, share it with community, coworkers, families, and friends. And on there you'll find our impact and ways that you can support the cause and, and help to end youth homelessness. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We have another proclamation, Healing in Motion, National Caregiver Appreciation Month, and November 10th, 2018 is National Caregiver Day. Thank you for coming and accepting this. Thank you very much, Council, Chief Staff. So, so let me just say a few things about this. Um, you know, it's interesting because I don't think a lot of people really know what caregivers do unless you've been involved. Um, we've had them for my mother-in-law, my father, and whatnot. And you see um, the care that these people provide and, and what they do when families can't be there. And even when families can be there, and it means an awful lot to people. And, and I don't think caregivers get enough recognition and thank you. And so I thank you for being involved. And I thank all caregivers that are taking care of our moms, our dads, our sisters, our brothers, our aunts and uncles. I think it's a very important thing and I thank you for that. So it's my honor to be able to provide this proclamation to thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman. So would you like to say I a few words? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Just to let you know that Caregiving is just like taking care of your own, like the military. You should try to thank them for doing what they do best because some people don't want to be, some people are meant to be in the military, some people are meant to be caregivers. So what I'm trying to convey to you is that when you see somebody that needs some help and you see a caregiver, you have to look and say, thank you so much for, take, for taking care of those people, unequivocally. It's about we the people, uh, us taking care of each other. And those who, those, who have not, those who can't take care of one another, it takes us to do it. Those who can't protect this country, it takes our military to do it. So in essence, caregivers are like the military, taking care of one another. So all I ask of you is that thank them for doing what they do best, taking care of your loved ones. And it does mean a lot. They do it as a special kind of person to be a caregiver. I was a caregiver to my parents, especially my mother. So I know what it's like being there. And thank you so much for listening. God bless you all, staff, and council. Mayor Mike. Thank you very much. And I said I wouldn't say this, but to the former mayor of Lathrop, oh, I appreciate no, I told it. You not to now say you're that. safe and ripping. Okay. You're safe and ripping. Luger, <laughs> you're deep. God bless you all. Thank you. We'll see you again, huh? Is, is Phil here? <coughs> Phil, we, we just appointed you to the, the, the uh, commission and weren't sure if you were here or not, but would you like to say a few words? We're very happy and proud to... to uh, can you come up here so we can... Just, just so we can get on tape and listen to the things we're doing. No, you go on the other side and... I apologize for my voice. Like the gentleman who takes care of elderly, uh, I've been taking care of my mom. She's gonna be turning 95 in about hopefully four more months. Uh, I used to be involved at the other spectrum with children, involved in them, and then I realized I was slowing down. So my competition now is at senior citizens. <laughs> If you notice, I'm a senior citizen. Um, I got involved with San Joaquin County. I'm gonna be on their executive board to hopefully give good suggestions that advances what I call being able to have seniors live a productive life independently as much as possible without having to be put in what I call uh, full care centers. 
We all probably have to get there sooner or later. And my job is to hopefully give them extend their independence in this life as long as possible. I appreciate this council recognizing me. I thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. If you have a business card, Dean would like to have it. <laughs> <laughs> He needs it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving on. <laughs> ordinance two, two ordinances. First reading and introduction. The business adds chapter 5.54 to Title Five Business Taxes, Licenses, and Regulations entitled Mobile Vendors to the Ripon Municipal Code pertaining to mobile vendors within the city of Ripon. Kenny. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow council members. Um, as you recall, at the September meetings, uh, staff did provide uh, some information to the council regarding. Uh, mobile food trucks and at that time uh, the council did give direction to staff of what they might like to see in, in a draft ordinance so we have put together a uh, draft mobile vendor ordinance because uh, there is other vendors out there besides uh, food vendors that uh, sell wares out of uh, mobile vehicles um, essentially the ordinance I'll go through kind of the essential points of it I'm not going to go point by point because I do believe there'll probably be a few questions that we can go through and answer but essentially, the ordinance would allow for the following uh, mobile food vendors, such as like ice cream trucks and lunch wagons. Um, they would be allowed to operate as they always have with un under our code where they can't, there's no stopping or standing in, in one spot for more than uh, 10 minutes in one location. Uh, a good example of that is a lot of times you'll see a lunch wagon roll through um, like a building site when they're doing new homes during uh, break times and uh, workers will come out and get uh, items off the food trucks. Typically, items on those trucks are prepared uh, food already. They're not being made as they're waiting. Um, it's already warmed up sandwiches or burritos um, and stuff like that that they're getting off those trucks. Um, that is one of the categories that's in our, in our new ordinance here. Um, secondly, mobile vendors uh, would be allowed to operate on private property for what we call a private invitation only event. Um, there is a definition in the ordinance that defines what that is. Um, it would be events such as um, a birthday party, wedding receptions, anniversary parties where people would have um, invited guests come to their homes and then hire somebody to come, obviously, uh, prepare food for them, such like a caterer would do, but a lot of people are starting to do that where they'll bring a food truck or a mobile vendor in to do that, that event. Um, they are defined, like I said, in the new ordinance. And... Um, and they would um, be basically be allowed to be parked on private property uh, for those events. Um, we have also allowed under the, under the new ordinance uh, something what we call a mobile food truck event. Um, we are looking at allowing that in, in certain areas within town, um, on, such as private property, and then also a couple of public locations, which uh, we have allocated Mislin Sports Park or the Upper Stouffer Park for those type of events. If someone wished to do that, it would require a special events permit to do that event, and uh, they could be held um, on a monthly or bi-monthly basis to where um, mobile food vendors or mobile vendors could congregate together and have an event um, like that for the general public. And then um, lastly, there's some exemptions that are allowed within the code, uh, such as mobile food ven uh, mobile vendors on or at school facilities. Uh, some, a lot of times you'll see a football game where they'll bring a mobile food vendor in for such an event like that. Uh, recreation facilities, uh, Babe Ruth, a lot of times would have a, a food vendor down there for their events during the baseball games. Um, or, or as part of special event permits, uh, Main Street Days, Farmers Markets, you'll see are starting to have some uh, food vendors, Ammon Blossom Festival and such. So those are the, the areas that we tried to define within the ordinance. Um, like I said, I won't go through line by line, but I will entertain uh, any questions if you guys have any at this time. Questions, anybody? Leo. I have some. Um, one of the things that's in there is a four hour limit for this. And I've shared this policy with some people. And that's one of the questions that comes up is suppose I have an event that's going to start in the afternoon and run into the evening. Why can't I keep the food truck around? 
I mean, that's something obviously that's open to the council for as far as policy make, uh, decision making. What we've typically seen with these type of events is they'll roll uh, and a, a mobile food truck would roll in, feed the group that's there, and then and then leave or go back out. Other events we've seen, it's not necessarily a mobile food truck, but mobile vendors would come in. Like a, um, there's some mobile boutique type shops or stuff that sells uh, pet items. They'd come to an event for a shopping event in the evening where they would hold an event at a business. They might be parked outside for that period, of, uh, a slight period of time. Typically, we're not seeing those things go past a four-hour time frame, but um, if that's something the council wants, council wants to uh, entertain or or, or extend, uh, certainly can do that. Okay. Number two, what is a non-residential private developed property? Pri private developed property is defined in the code. That means property owned by a non-governmental legal entity such as the city or county or such and has been improved uh, pursuant to our code. So a either a house has been built on it or a business, pay their development fees. That's what private development property is. So non-residential private developed property is anything that's not residentially zoned. But it's, uh, it's not residentially zoned, but it's a developed piece of property. So, so it's okay to have a food truck way. down by the industrial part of town, Under but not okay way. to have one yeah. in my cul-de-sac. Correct. Okay. And when you talk about having it in the industrial part of town, that would be for private invitation only events. Okay. They're not just allowed to show up on private property and just sell to the general public. Unless it's a food truck event that is done with a special events permit. And who decides that? That's what the ordinance I know, goes but through. who makes the decision of whether it's a private property selling to the public or a private property food truck event that's selling to the, what's the difference? What's the, di the difference would be, say, uh, a company that wants to bring a food truck in for their employees to, to have a, an event or a special uh, type of event uh, where they're feeding them lunch. Employees are the ones that they're serving. They're not open to the general public. General public can't just uh, drive up. They're not open for business to the general public to drive up and go to that event and, and frequent that, that okay. food truck. Suppose they wanted to do that. That's not allowed within this code. And that's kind of, kind of what we heard the council's desires at the September meeting saying we didn't necessarily want food trucks to be able to be parked throughout different areas of town on private property just to be open to the general public. But they can ask but to the general public. Correct. Correct. So do they have to police it? If some if somebody has one that's for their people and some of these kids sitting right here that get out of school at eleven thirty on a weekday and they go downtown and all of a sudden they realize, hey, look what's here. Who's responsible for making sure they don't go over there and eat at that? Well, I say so you can have you can even have a business say down in the industrial area where they're serving their employees and somebody comes up and, and goes to that event. But if you start seeing a food a mobile food vendor locating a spot just open to the general public, it'd be up to for, up to us to go police, which we have done in the past. We've we actually seen these things locate out by the truck stops, and we've had to go chase them out because it wasn't allowed within our ordinance. Well, I'm not talking about the vendor. I'm talking about the kids. Let's assume that Bank of Stockton decides that they're going to bring a food truck onto their property on Wednesday so that their employees can have food <coughs> out of that food truck that day. <coughs> and at 1140, 900 kids start wandering downtown. And at 1145, about 20 of them realize, hey, instead of spending my money over here, I'm going to go get something over there. Who's I don't know responsible if, I don't that? know if you're ever going to stop that totally from happening, but they can't have that on a consistent basis. So what you're trying to prevent here with the ordinance is this thing locating daily or weekly at the Bank of Stockton to go through this. I understand that. I got it. But the way the ordinance is read, the example I came up with is also in violation of the ordinance. And what I have a problem with is when we as a city government sit here and say, yeah, but we're not going to do anything about it. Because the next time something comes up, the question becomes, how come you're doing something about this, but you didn't do something about that? Okay. That's 
Well, wouldn't it be the That's respons- where my problem is. Right. No, and, and I'm not be the quite sure I understand how to write that in the but code. But if our ordinance says that, and Bank of Stockton brings in a mobile, isn't it Bank of Stockton's responsibility to make sure it's properly? Yeah, it should be. I mean, I mean somebody's got to be responsible. If they're the ones inviting them, it seems to me they'd be breaking the rules. Right. I mean. What are, what's, what's the penalty for breaking a rule on that? What's the penalty if someone does, does break the rule? They'd be in violation of the ordinance. We would actually tell the food truck to, to leave. I mean, it's similar to, like I said, one parking in town now uh, at a lot. They are not allowed, so we would, we've, we've chased them off before. Because we know that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen, no well, doubt. What about, like, the customer appreciation day? So, and you'd say Bank of Stockton does a customer appreciation day. Right. To be able this to their customers you can't, as well. This says yeah. you can't do that. No, uh, the, the one section, uh, yeah. Well, a customer appreciation day would fall under a private Im- invitation event. Yeah, it's a, it's I mean, that, like a, a business right? having an appreciation for their customers mm-hmm. to come. I mean, that, that does fall under that private invitation event. But they couldn't do a customer appreciation day every Friday. Correct. It would have to be a... How often every, could they every do Third it? Friday. Well, the board can sort <laughs> that out as opposed to us sorting that out. Because that would be more of a thing. Is that inconsistent basis means not occurring on a regular basis as determined by the planning director. If, as soon as you draw a line in that sand and say not more than once a quarter, more than once a month, that you're going to get challenged on that. So, I mean, it's got to, there's got to be some discretion, I think, left to staff at City Hall to say, hey, this is starting to occur on a weekly basis. This is just a food truck trying to locate in town. Okay. I'm not sure I agree, but okay. Uh, next, one of the things is that if uh, if there is an event in a residential area, it has to be parked in the driveway. Why do we allow a motorhome to park on the street for up to three days, and we will not allow a food truck to park on the street for four hours? So it, it's not necessarily the size of the vehicle that you're talking about. It's, it's the potential, I think, uh, the potential of having like a food truck spill grease or something like that on, on a city street with their cooking that, that becomes our issue to have to go clean up. Like if you got a paver street or even asphalt street and there's an oil spill from a food truck uh, on the city street because of a block party, then it, it's, it becomes kind of our issue to go deal with. Uh, and that was the purpose behind that. Then you can send them a bill. And, and you can certainly do that. I mean, I was looking at the uh, <coughs> block party there's actually a block party permit that the police department does. It's kind of a block party agreement. It does talk about um, if the police department's called out that, that the people that are having a block party can um, be responsible for any expense incurred. We can actually add stuff on there too that if there's any damage to that. Certainly someone could close down the street and then have some of these mobile food vendors uh, as part of a block party if, if that's yeah, the and council. And I'm not asking fired. about blocking off the street, although I'm wondering why not, but we'll get to that. But I just have a problem with the idea that I can't have a food truck on the street. I have to put it in the driveway. But if I have a trailer house in the driveway, I got I get cited for that versus a food truck. See, and I, I get what you're saying, but I looked at it more from a safety issue. When you start having food vendors, begin to people start moving. That's what I looked at, but I didn't think about it that part, but I was looking at it more from a safety standpoint, it made some sense. Well, but let's be honest. If I have a food truck in my driveway or I have it on the street in front of my house, you got the same safety issue. I, I had one my next door neighbor had when he had it in the driveway and everybody stayed in the driveway. I mean, I, but that was... The one thing Stacy and I were just talking about too, you are going to get um, a group of people at the food truck trying to get their food all at the same time. You're going to have issues with blocking the sidewalk also. In a residential area? When I'm walking my dog, I don't want anybody to block my sidewalk. Then cross the street. <laughs> Why should I have to go out of my way? I would I'm stop and get some food and then keep walking <laughs> my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, there's a part of me that says we are being so restrictive on this. And the reasons I'm getting for me are maybe half okay. 
This yep. is something we've been talking about for a long time. And it's almost like we're bound and determined not to do it, but say we will. I, I just, I have a problem with that. This, I'd rather come back here in six months because we've had four grease bills and three people run over and killed and say we got to kill this than to start with the assumption that all that is going to happen. Therefore, we're going to not open this up. That's just me. I think we're just, we're going a little bit overboard here. Not giving people credit. I don't have a problem with anybody else. I mean, I don't have a problem limiting it to the driveway. Anybody else? I'm, I'm more in Leo's camp here on this one. Okay. I, I think we're intentionally trying to gerrymander it to where it's, it, it's only on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock every third Sunday that falls on, you know, that's the first, you know, that's the 30th of the month or, or whatever. And so I think that we need to, maybe even if we need to take a pause on this and kind of let it settle, let it settle down and then go back and relook at it with fresh eyes, I think we can, and I think we should. But I'm more in Leo's camp that it feels like we're intentionally trying to set up roadblocks where I don't think any need to be set up. You can get one more thing. Oh, I'm in, I mean, I, I see Leo's point when it comes to the residential areas, maybe. I mean, if I wanna have a, a cupcake lady show up at my house and have a party, she parks in the street, she parks in the driveway, I don't think it really matters to me. Um, as far as the limitations and the structure we've set up for as far as in, you know, for businesses, downtown, et cetera, I think we're probably on line with where I'd wanna be. So that's my input. Well, and I'll, I'll agree with the second part of that. The idea that we're gonna keep this from, you know, there was a guy that was here at the meeting when we were talking about it who lived in Salida, and mm -hmm. that was the point he made, that they had overrun the town. Mm -hmm. I do not want to see that. Mm -hmm. No way, shape, or form. But the idea that we're going to assume that any little bit of wiggle room we give somebody is going to result in that, I think we're, I think we're overreacting. Well, then maybe we change it and, and take a look at it and see what happens. Share what the, what the result comes out to be, and if it becomes a problem, then we can go back and look at it again, right? Well, I'd, I'd like to see the somehow relaxing that four-hour limit in residential areas and see what happens. And I'd like to fine. You want to park the thing on the street in front of your house? Go for it. Yeah. I would say we make those two changes as well. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I'm probably pretty good with the rest of it. And I yeah, I agree. I mean, if somebody wants to have it for eight hours, they have it for eight hours. Here's a question I have though, but if so if food vendors were to park on the street, which let's just, we'll, we'll do that. They gotta be careful, so I guess they gotta follow the same rules about if they run cords and stuff like that, right? Or across the sidewalk, we're gonna have yep. to have That would be the same as, as the, uh, RVs and such too, okay. you're not supposed all right. to block yeah. it. Yeah. All right, as long as that's included, I guess, so people don't trip and fall and all that. And that's certainly something, like I said, we could, the council can adjust that if they'd like. Um, uh, like having an event, a private event, if they park in front of the house or in the driveway, it, either way is probably fine. Um, the four hours was just something that uh, we threw in there because that's how long we thought some of these events last. Typically you see them, like I said, roll up to, to serve an event and then they, they pack up and go. If they wanna have them there longer, you know, just during the event, obviously they can be there. So if the event's an eight hour event, um, probably not a big issue. I think that the big issue is where people don't want to start seeing these things on a daily basis, parking somewhere and saying, you know, I'm here for this private event. I right. have That's no problem with that. Right, but I think those two changes, we're not gonna really see any negative effects if we make those changes. The last question I have has to do with um, where they can be. As I read this ordinance the way it says now, if there is some sort of a special event happening at the community center, they cannot include a food truck in that event. No, they can. So where's that? I because I thought it was public property. Therefore, we were saying no. Oh, you're correct. It, it basically the two parks that you're saying that they can be allowed at would be um, the Nestle Sports Park or Upper Stouffer Park with a special events permit. I, I thought we mentioned that they, that they rented the community center that they could have a food truck as part uh, of it. Under exemptions, there you go, yes. Under exemptions, mobile food, mobile vendors as part of a special events permit issued by the city. So as part of this, it, they're under the exempt, so they'd be all part of a special events permit. 
that they could do that. Okay. Well, we're saying a mobile, when you're <laughs> talking about just a mobile food truck or a food truck event only, so we're saying it can be on private property so or Miss Lynn Stouffer. Those, okay. those are the two public parks that we would allow just a food truck event yeah, to happen at. Question. But they could do a special right, events at any of these other places that in include. All right, I got it. Yeah. Hey, Ken, what's the lead time on a special events permit again? Three years. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should relax. Don't, 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 yeah, 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 don't give me ideas. Um, I don't, Ted, do you know the answer to that on that? I don't deal with those as much as. Couple weeks. Okay, okay. Oh, I thought it was like 60 yeah. days. Oh, no. Oh, okay, no, that's, that's it's, perfect. If it's available as okay. fast as you can get the paperwork done. It depends, that's it that depends how, who, who we have to reach out to and, and how fast we can get a group that's together true. to look through these. Because you go to fire, police, okay. generally public works. Mr. Mayor, they're traditionally uh, or currently, they're about 10 to 14 days by the time they're submitted till they're uh, notified whether it's been granted okay. or not. That's okay. 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 That's pretty that's good. Okay, Mrs. That's Attorney, yeah. can we? first read and adopt this with the two changes that we talked about and then it would come back in a month and if the changes are there we keep going or do we have to wait a month and first reading and adopt with after it's changed just to be clear the two changes are the eight hours instead of four hours correct and mm -hmm. then what was the other one keep the park on the street, park park on the street, street or, or in the driveway or excuse me instead of the park i think that's fine well i'd like the, I would the time see. limit to say that it can only be there during the time of the event. I just say, don't put a time limit, just say during the event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody will care because we'll all be there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we can, we can make those changes and come back and do a second reading next time. Okay. And I will move to adopt the ordinance with those two changes. Okay. Okay, three, discussion item. Staff has recommended city council reduce the February 1, 2019 water rate increase from 11 to 4%, reduce the sewer rates increase from 10 to zero, and move forward with the 5% garbage rate increase as originally approved. Now, I just wanna make one comment. Private business versus government. When you increase something less than what you were going to increase it, you're reducing it, but go ahead. You're reducing the increase. <laughs> <laughs> I got that warrior too. <laughs> oh, I gotta love Kevin. Oh, Elizabeth, gotta love Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, it's me on this one. All right, I'm just gonna walk through this really quickly, um, and I'll take questions at the end, please. <laughs> but um, so, in 2015, uh, we passed a resolution resolution we went through the prop 218 process to adopt these um, enterprise rates uh, and we've done been reviewing these rates for the past three years and implemented uh, the recommended rates last year was the only year that we had a change and we reduced the sewer rate increase from 10 percent to five percent and so now this is uh, we're doing another evaluation which will be implemented in February of 2019 so here is just an overview of our enterprise funds and the targets we have for them. The water and the sewer um, are meeting the, currently meeting the targets and the garbage is met the target transfer to the capital fund but did not meet the final ending cash balance. Can so for, yep. Excuse me, can we ask questions as we go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rather than I her? save them up at the yeah. end. And you Go ahead. Only at the end. Do you have a question on this? Yep. Those three transfers that are listed. Yep. Where does that money go? To our capital fund account. To the capital the, fund. The enterprise. Inter yeah, enterprise. These are enterprise operating funds going to enterprise oh, capital funds. Gotcha. All right. All right. Thank you. So for the water, uh, this is an overview of what. Uh, it looks like right now. Uh, so for 2018, you could see that the target and the actual are pretty close, but uh, we still are projected to be higher than the target. So we are recommending a 2% um, for this coming year increase, and then we project a 2% uh, 
for the fiscal year 20, but again, we'll come back and review that before that increase is implemented. And the increases um, would be beneficial because they would uh, get residential and commercial rates more in line to be the same. For sewer, here's what it looks like for sewer. And you could see we're doing quite well. The ending cash balance is way above the target. So this year we're recommending a 0% rate increase. Um, we're projecting a 2% uh, for fiscal year 20, but that may go down depending on the study next year. And um, at the top there, you could see that we have um, 380,000 reserved by fiscal year 20 for the wastewater treatment plant and 2.2 million res res reserved by fiscal year 20 for the capital expenditures for sewer. I have another question. Yep. That wastewater treatment plant reserve, the gray stripe at the top, as I recall when we adopted this, part of the fee was to go into that fund because we know at some point in the future a the wastewater treatment plant will not have enough capacity for the town at that point and b there are going to be changes in the requirements for wastewater treatment and we're going to have to upgrade Re can you refresh my memory of when we think that's going to happen So this is something that um, the engineering department looks at once a year when we go through the capital improvement program. If I remember right, uh, they, they look ahead five years um, and it was not needed, uh, the, or at least the first phase of that expansion was not needed in the next five years. I would guess the next five to 10 years. Part of it would be from this gray account. Yes. The other part would be an adjustment to PFFP exactly. funds for new construction to pay for it. Exactly. And then when we hired RMC consultants to put together that facility plan a few years ago, um, they allocated those costs based off uh, what growth would be required to pay and what existing existing. And what about the, not expansion, but upgrade? Yeah, so uh, we have a very favorable permit for, for us. Um, at, at some point, we're going to reach our disposal capacity that we're allotted from the state in that permit. Once we reach that, this, this very likely it's, um, it, uh, that the state is going to issue a new permit with much more stringent limits, uh, discharge limits. So at that point, we are going to have to go to a more advanced uh, treatment system. That is a very large uh, project, probably on the order of 35 to $36 million to, to do that. And we're not putting any money aside for that? Uh, yes. Uh, th this will also go aside for that. Uh, that that's further down the road, uh, further out than five to 10 So that $20,000 a year, A, it'll get bigger as we get more yeah. users, but that is for both? Yes. Okay. And, and I think when we set this, we, we projected that out when we came up with these rates and how much we're being allocated. This is something that we just started in fiscal year 16. Before that, we've never been no, putting I'm, I, I'm just trying to keep yeah. straight in my mind whether it looks like we're going to be there when we need it. That's yeah, all. And, and so we, we laid out, I think, a couple options when Tom Pavlovich went through. Uh, I think what we recognized back in fiscal year 16 was we just had to start doing something because we hadn't been doing anything. And you can see on here, it's incrementally getting bigger over time. And the plan is to continue to do that um, so it's not such a shock to, to the ratepayers. And, and I think we recognize as we went through that, it's very likely you're not going to collect enough money at the end of the day when you have to do these. But what that money will do is reduce the, uh, the bond the bond that okay. we have to go out and get. So the permit expires with capacity, not with time? Yes. Okay. That, that, that's the way it's supposed to happen. Well, you know what they did with Stockton. You know what they did with Stockton. They made them treat it so well that they treated it so well they had to back off how they treated it because they made it too clean for whatever they handed on. But that's state government, though. <laughs>
Thank you. Okay. You're okay. Any other questions for Sewer? So this is the garbage account. As you could see, it's below the targeted um, this year. By the end, uh, by fiscal year 20, they should, um, our ending cash balance should be very similar to what we projected in 2015. Uh, we're still increasing towards our goal. It's just gonna take us a little longer to get there because of extra expenses for that account. Can, can you do me a favor, go back two slides three slides. Okay, I see water cash, your targeted cash is 50% of 0.5 of expenses, I get right. it. Mm -hmm. The next one's 0.5, why is the last one 0.35? It's a more stable fund, there's not um, really any volatility, um, there's not, um, there's much lower expenses and revenue coming in and out, so it's just, it's, not as, um, I don't know the word to say it. But I mean, 50% is 50%. It may not be as volatile, but you still have expenses. Yeah, the other thing is that uh, the garbage account does not have any debt associated with it. So both water okay. and sewer have bond payments we meet each year. I got that you. was also part of the reason they wanted to make sure we had enough uh, reserves set aside to make those bond payments. So okay. With the garbage, uh, there is no debt associated with it. Okay, I get it. That makes sense. <coughs> Thanks. For an actual bill, um, it's the t with the two percent water increase, zero sewer, and five percent garbage. Um, the bill for a single family residential um, resident could uh, goes up about three percent total. So their bill could be looking at about ninety eight dollars and going up to one hundred and one dollars. So the increase is minimal from two thousand and fifteen. Um, they should be at $108 if we in implemented all of the rate increases. So here's just an overview of what we uh, proposed rates in 2015 that were adopted, and then table two is the implemented rates and what we're currently proposing for the next two years. And again, we reevaluate these every year, and as you can see, they're well below uh, what was proposed in 2015. Are there any other questions? I have one more. It's not about this. My question is, in 2015, we adopted a rate structure that covered five years and had built-in increases. If we reduce the implementation of one of those, like lost the ability to impose that rate, or could we come back and do it later if you could the still bottom fell out of what happened? Yeah, you could still implement those rate increases. What those were saying was you can't go over that amount in each of those given years. So if if it says uh, $27 for 2019 as base rate, we can't go over that, but we could definitely increase it to $26 if we wanted to. <coughs> but, um, and then, you know, we could work up to that final um, fiscal year 20, uh, what we adopted well, amount. So my question, go, yeah, go back. No, you could keep increasing uh, years beyond that. It's just the rate, the maximum rate that we adopted, we can't go above the rate yeah, we go adopted. Go back one slide. Mm -hmm. In other words, what we adopted was there was supposed to be a sewer rate increase of 10% for 2019. We're proposing it to be zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like could fiscal year 2022, we could still increase that to that 10%. 10%. Right. Anytime. Anytime, yeah. Just not beyond, Just not beyond that percentage. Right, no, I understand that. Once we get to the maximum, we're stuck yeah, it's unless not we limited. go through the process again. Okay. My concern is when we did this, we had some things in mind that were going to happen, and I get a little nervous when you back off and don't do it, and then three years from now, well, instead of 10 percent, we're raising it 20 percent. And I think uh, when we went through this the first time, obviously we have limitations with 218, and 218 provided you the ability 
to go out five years. Well, your crystal ball is fairly clear. Obviously, you can see here in the first three years, it gets a little fuzzier after that. Right. So I, I think the council's direction of staff about going out and reevaluating this was, was obviously a, a good direction. But what it does give you, instead of a five-year rate increase, it could you could have the same rate increases over seven Six years. Six or seven years, as long as we don't end up above what we approved. Exactly. Right. Okay. In total. In total. All right. And these up on the screen are, are what we approved back in 2015. So uh, for a, a one-inch meter residential customer, that $36.40, we could work up to that however long it takes us to get to that rate. And are we getting closer to having commercial and residential water rates? Because, I mean, they were way different right. when we started. And one of, the, I, one of the things in here is to try to get them all equal. Right. So on the screen here, you can see what they look like right now and what they're going to look like uh, recommended. And, yeah, they are yeah, getting so closer. Yeah. yeah, okay. Questions coming? So, so the comment I will make is I'm, I'm typically the kind of person who says as long as we got it budgeted in there, grab the money, set it aside, and kind of hoard it. But that's the wrong thing. That you do that in private business. So the government, I think, it's right to, to give people back their money or not increase it. That's just the right thing to do. As much as I would like to hoard it and save it for a rainy day, almost like what Leo's talking about, the um, I think this is so. I you for doing that yeah. rather than just keeping it the same. If you had kept it the same, we would have just gone on and had bigger reserves. So I think this is a good strategy. I like what you guys did. Thank you. That's my comment. I don't yeah, know if anybody else no, has I, mean, I would say that this is the quintessential definition of good stewardship. So it's recognizing the fact that when you, your projections are off, that you go back and readjust and, and you um, choose more accordingly. Yeah, I, I think it's a good job. Okay. Anybody else? Do we, okay, do, do we need action on that? We need a motion. Go ahead, Jake. Come on, do something. Oh, Dean beat me to it. He wants, because, <laughs> because Stacy said 7 o'clock and 7.02. Uh -huh. Stacy, you give me the dirty stuff. <laughs> Hurry up and do it. Okay. B, discussion, no action on the financial audits. I looked at him. I have no questions. No, I, I want to read them. Okay. So they'll, yeah. they'll they'll come back to the record? No. <laughs> but they'll come back for action in December, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And thank you for giving them to us in time to have plenty of time to read them. You're welcome. Once again, I have seen my notes on my written, but there's no notes that showed up on my thing there. Way to go, Dan. <laughs> so something goofed up. You're lucky. I guess we will get out early. <laughs> I guess Stacy got a hold of Dan before the meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> policy for banners and right of way. Staff is recommended the city council consider approving or attached policy for banners and right of way. Again, I have notes on there, but I don't see them. Ooh. There were some brilliant thoughts. Well, yeah, I, I bet. This is so who's? I, I'll handle this one, okay. Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is something that uh, the city council asked staff to go back and consider a, a banner policy. This was a follow up or. Um, a result of the conversation we had about the American Legion and the banners that they were requesting to be installed on the uh, street lights along Fulton Avenue. So what this, this draft policy does is um, it allows uh, other nonprofit entities to place banners on street lights in the public right of way. Um, the banners are intended to promote community-wide uh, not-for-profit initiatives and shall not be used for any fundraising or as advertising for, the, for uh, private business or related enterprises. Do list certain requirements of the banners, uh, the size and, and the images uh, that are supposed to be on there and what they're going to be made of. Uh, the other part of this, we did list uh, what nonprofit entities would be um, uh, able to to apply to install banners on street lights. So there's uh, five different requirements uh, as part of this draft policy. Uh, as part of the, the approval process of this, um, a nonprofit who is eligible uh, will, will submit an application to the planning director and he will determine if they meet all the requirements set forth in this policy. 
The last thing I'll, uh, I'll mention is that it would require an encroachment permit from the engineering department, similar that we talked about with the uh, American Legion, the desire is to make sure that they have the right brackets that they're attaching to it, um, and they have a licensed contractor who's going to uh, install it, maintain it, and remove the, the damage. This is an example, Kevin, of um, what the <laughs> veterans are doing okay. for their we had this on Veterans Day and it was out there. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a good looking one on the left. <laughs> so that, that's the type of banner that, that we're talking about. Um, the one thing I'd also point out uh, is we, we get requests at various times uh, for banners along um, Second Street near Stockton Avenue. That's really something we don't have a policy on or anything in place. So we have included an exemption in here allowing uh, banners for certain events. Uh, they're listed as Emma Blossom, 4th of July, Soaring Over Ripon, or Main Street Days, or any other city-sponsored initi or initiated events um, are able to put banners across Second Street for to advertise those, um, those events. And then we also excluded um, American flags are installed on city-owned street lights along the Central Business District on downtown. So I do have a question on that. That was what was one of my notes. So is soaring over ribbon a city sponsored event? I believe uh, chamber. It's a, it's a chamber event. The chamber, but we included it in the in the ordinance as a city sponsored event. Okay, yeah. because we have a resolution for first responder appreciation day, does that mean that can't banner cannot going forward be put up? Because we use Second Street for that first responder appreciation day. Yeah, if you wanted to include that, we could add that to. to well, I like to because we do it every year. We have done it every year so far. Yeah, I, I would, if there's certain events that the council would like to be added to this, uh, we certainly could 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 add that. Could it? Well, could you? Right. Could you generalize that it is a, a city approved or some kind of event that? Because otherwise, that list is going to keep going and going right. and going. And we do get a special permit for it uh, at that point. So maybe if it has to go through a special permit yeah, process, and that'll changes. do it. Yeah, but you're right. Love Ripon, we, we get those. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So and do they do a special permit for that? They weren't able to put it up last year. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, we tried to get it. It wasn't enough time. It wasn't yeah. time to make it happen. But if they did a special permit, they had enough time they could, correct? Right. Like I said, there, there's no policy in place. Uh, maybe that we, as long as it meets a special permit requirement or something. Yeah, we could put some maybe some requirements in there. So yeah, yeah, rather than list be the event. Because you'll never list them all. Yeah. 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 We could put some thought into some language that could do that. You want some more questions? Yes. <laughs> um, under permissible use. It says no advertising for for-profit. I guess my question is, do we really want advertising of any kind on a light poles in this city? What we what started this is not an advertisement; it's a recognition program. I thought that was. Really and so I would suggest that we figure out a better description of what we can use these things for, because otherwise you're going to get somebody, oh, hey, we're going to have a car show. We're not going to charge anybody, so we'd like to put a sign up there. Or, hey, we're going to have this event. We're not going to charge anybody, and it's a nonprofit. We'd like to put banners up. You can put the requirements and be something that we never intended. Right. Well, you know, we say that for profit. We say that up front, and then later on we say for for non profit initiatives and events. We probably, I, the, the intent was not to allow the, the advertising, it was more the initiative. Yeah, I mean, it ought to be in our specific. So we, we could remove yeah. events I right there. Need to to uh, number two, there's a list under requirements. I'm just suggesting you reorder it because as I was reading it, I, kept, I came up with a question, two places down it was answered. Then I came up with another question, one place down it was answered. I think if you listed them in the right order, the questions would never come up because they, they would build on each other. Okay, I'll give you my suggestion. And then the last one is, it says, one of the requirements is the organization has to be housed within the city of Ripon. The VFW is not housed inside the city limits. And that new Church of Christ, they're not housed inside the city limits either. So, I'm just saying, yeah, an alternative to that, if the council would like to consider, is maybe using this, this fairly influence. Yeah. Would you like to 
<laughs> then you're going to have Manteca people coming in here. <laughs> the VFW is not doing that, those flags. That's the American Legion. No, 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 but anything else. They, they couldn't do anything yeah. because they're outside the right. limits. That was my only point. So, so I have two questions. One is, why does it have to be, I understand why, what you're going to say, but why does it have to be vinyl? What if it's some other kind of material that would hold, stand up better than vinyl and uh, always look good? Like metal. We, we can add it. Yeah, or metal. I mean, no, you get aluminum, aluminum, you can put the holes in it and it'll hold up a lot better. We, we, we can add an or equal. Uh, the, the intent is to have something that's going to stand up over the test. Exactly. Yeah. So we can add or equal material. Yeah. 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 The other thing is, too, going back to Leo's comment about um, entity must, well, it's one of the five. Uh, entity must operate and conduct regular meetings in the city room. But I would add, and they must keep minutes. Because you don't know how many organizations say, yeah, we have meetings all the time. And there's no minutes. Nobody knows what's talked about. You have to, by law, keep minutes if you're going to be a nonprofit. So we might as well just make sure they provide the minutes. What if it's or a two-person nonprofit? You still got to keep minutes. You got to keep minutes. It's a lot of different. I don't think there's going to be a lot of groups out there trying to exploit this, but... No, but if you put it in there, they'll think... I know, but let's say you have a two-person organization, and, and we're a nonprofit, and we want to go put up some banners in your city, we meet the requirement, no, we can't. Keep you minutes. Know. Well, I'm not saying you have to keep well, minutes I'm, for I'm five not, years. I'm, I'm not even asking you about the minutes. I'm just saying about the limited amount of requirements. Like, we're, we're setting up policy that really almost all allows something that you might not want. There's no discretion by the city. Yeah, but do we really want to give the staff discretion? Maybe. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's maybe a... You think it's too tight? Not tight no, enough. it's not tight enough. You it's, it's yeah, you, I, can, I guarantee you I can find a nonprofit that you would not want my banner up there that fits these requirements right now. Fits anything that we're going to say. I'll make it happen if you want me to do it. <laughs> Prove it. I don't know. I want to. Well, let's test it. It's going to take five years, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the point is, you, you can probably potentially get something that you really don't want that can meet these requirements. You couldn't set enough requirements to make Well, I think that was Leo's comment why we bunch something together to begin with. So you but it, you may get the No, no, I get it. it. You can, okay, we have these rules, but if something falls in the rules you still don't like, then you have no discretion still. Well, but that's always the risk that you run with any of these. Yeah. No, I agree. But I just you point don't is there don't a, is there a way to have discretion in this? I don't know. Still, someone has to approve it each time. I don't know. Well, it comes to the council. Can we ask the staff to address yeah. the issues that have been raised and to bring it back next month for another go-round? Yes. Rather than try to adopt something now and give you a list of things that have to yeah. change. And address the concerns and try it again? Yeah. 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 Rather do it right the first time. Than the yeah, first time. find out we have a problem when we got it correct. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, this isn't one you want to get wrong. No, no, no exactly. Oh, so it's our first, first shot at it. I mean, we could always have the city attorney meet with the city administrator and have a change tonight. We could. In fact, that's a good idea. That's all right. That's great. I like very <laughs> I think it's a good, no, no, without us. Yeah. Because I understand there's some stakes to it, and so we. <laughs> 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 I would never say the word. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Okay, so you bring that back. So with that, okay? Did I get enough direction? Okay, good. So with that, we'll go to Department F. Chief. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Honorable City Council, members of the public. I just have uh, two quick items uh, for tonight. Uh, one is a reminder that tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Uh, we will have an area of responsibility meeting. It's a quarterly meeting. Uh, this will be for area four, although topics from the uh, general city will be discussed and available uh, for discussion with the public. That will be in our uh, emergency operations center, uh, our training room uh, in the police department tomorrow night. Uh, the second item is 
And the engineer, engineering department and the police department have been monitoring uh, the intersection of uh, West Millville Avenue and North Acacia Avenue uh, for some time uh, regarding uh, hazardous conditions or potential hazardous conditions due to the amount of vehicle traffic and the amount of traffic collisions that have been occurring at that intersection. Uh, recently, uh, the engineering department conducted a MUTCD uh, traffic study. Uh, I'll let James explain that in the future if there's, a, if there's any questions about it or what that comprises. But uh, based on that traffic study, uh, there are three conditions or combination of conditions that would encourage uh, a traffic a signal device at that intersection other than the two-way stop that is currently there. Uh, at the completion of that traffic study, uh, based on the amount of traffic uh, at that intersection and the amount of collisions at that intersection, so a combination of both of those events uh, indicate that a traffic, a four-way traffic signal should uh, be erected at that intersection, which would create a four-way stop for both north and south on uh, North Acacia, which currently exists, and east and west traffic on West Mildred, which does not exist at this time. Uh, the installation of that four-way stop, we believe, would help reduce the traffic collisions that are currently occurring at that intersection and potential hazardous conditions for uh, roadway obstruction. Uh, we're trying to um, have people uh, come to a stop at that intersection before they proceed into it and uh, avoid that hazardous condition. Uh, it is important to note that uh, uh, the installation is for the safety of the intersection, not for speed control, as the study uh, does not uh, recommend stop signs for the slowing of traffic in that area. Uh, the also, also, the uh, last item for that uh, study, um, we reviewed the municipal code at uh, section uh, 1012. Uh, not only myself, but the city administrator and the city attorney's office reviewed that. There is uh, a couple of issues within our current ordinance that need to be addressed at a future uh, date and time. Um, one is section uh, 1012, section 10, which uh, requires that a city council approval for any installation of traffic control devices. Uh, it kind it conflicts with section uh, 1012 40 uh, parent A and 40 parent B, which gives the authority to the police chief to erect a traffic signal device within the city if hazardous conditions exist. Uh, so we're requesting that in future uh, date and time that that ordinance be cleared up so there's no confusion, uh, confusion in, the, in the future should a traffic signal device be required within our city. I was going to ask you about those conflicting paragraphs, but uh, what what we basically yeah what we what we came to determine that was that if there was no study, no MUTCD study, that a traffic signal device to be erected within our community would have to come out the direction of the city council. With a study have taken place and the study recommending a traffic signal device to be installed at that location, with that backup, the chief of police or me at the current time could go ahead and have that uh, traffic signal device erected. A little confusing, but we want to um, take steps so in the future that there is no confusion and we can take the most expeditious route in getting those uh, traffic control devices uh, in place. Not everything. There are some challenging things here you can't fix. That is very hard. That is very hard. Okay. So I want to make a comment since we're still on the police department. It's not that it's, it's not, I'm not going to wait till my turn. So I went on a ride along. And I will tell you with, with uh, Officer Qualley. And I got to tell you, Chief, the professionalism. I, I saw four of your guys, they had de escalated the situation. I thought somebody was going to do that with Hayes. And they went out there very professionally, very organized, decelerated what I thought was going to be a terrible situation. And everybody walked away shaking hands. I saw when, he, when they pulled people over, they weren't playing games just because I was in the car. Because I sat in the car, I wasn't told to get out, stay in there. But I did because I wasn't going to get out for any reason. 
and your people handled themselves in a very professional, organized manner. But I got to tell you, it, it, it's really, I'm proud that to be part of not only the council, but the city. And it all comes from the top. And you can tell by talking to your officers, they don't just look at this as a job. They really care about the people. I mean, I heard them explain to people why certain things they were doing were dangerous. It wasn't, here's your ticket, you know, pay the bill. So, um, I have nothing but good things to say, and I'm sure Ted took me on a ride someplace. I'd say the same thing about his department and guys, but but I did go on a ride along, and I, I, I compliment your team that you put together because I think they handled themselves extremely well, and I'm, I'm very proud of them, and I think it, it goes to um, why they're so well recognized and liked in the community. People aren't afraid of our cops, and they're local people. They look at you as part of it, and so I think that's part of it. It's the attitude and, and the way they approach and deal with people, so congratulations and thanks. I'll second what Ted said so much better. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Ted? Ted? <coughs> yes, uh, I wanted to report on the water usage for October. It was 21.13% uh, from our thir 2013 um, usage before the drought started. That brings our <coughs> running, 12-month uh, running average to 23.8%. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that we are at the one day a week watering schedule uh, currently. That's it. Did you do ride along? Did you do ride along? Yeah, we, we can well, put you in the garbage a, truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about an air conditioned lawnmower? Yeah, I was going to say something needs to ride that mower. Has our water guy been going out to check it off people watering? Because there's a lot of people that are still on the three day schedule. We, uh, Told yes. Mona. So the guy is working. So the guy is working. Well, I see him out and about. I see him out. He's uh, been extremely busy, especially after November 1st. Uh, we've issued uh, 156 notices uh, since since November 1st, and then we've also got about uh, 40 more that we picked up last night. Uh, we had our crews uh, for the last week working uh, overtime. Uh, working through the middle of the night, um, making notice of just so we can remind people. So we can remind it's a simple door hang that uh, we are at a different, different schedule. Thanks, Ted. Guy, anything? Nothing? Ken, anything else? Yeah, um, Monday night, if you're sitting at home and you're looking for something to do, you can come down to the Planning Commission meeting. We are having one this month. Um, a couple items on there of interest. Um, we are getting a, a, a Commission will be looking at a fast food restaurant in your town, and Express is uh, trying to locate here in town, out by uh, Jack in the Box and Carl's Jr., so they'll be voting on that. And uh, we will be reviewing the Dimension Regulation Ordinance, which is kind of deals with um, patio structures, patio accessory buildings, ECM lots, RV covers and such. Uh, we are adding some. We are adding some. <laughs> We are adding some, uh, adding some uh, provisions in there for our medium density lots that are being built now out by uh, Mrs. Sports Park, so you'll see some of those changes. Uh, the Planning Commission will, will be reviewing that and making a recommendation to City Council, so that would probably hopefully hit uh, City Council for uh, the December meeting. Thanks, Ken. Anything from the engineering duo? Yeah, just real quick, yeah, I uh, real quick. provided yeah, each of the council members uh, an updated project list. Um, you can see down at the bottom we've added four bottom, projects since the, uh, projects the surplus. Since the, uh, the um, I won't go into all the changes or all the changes, uh, changes yeah, through, throughout these projects. Uh, most of them are minor. Minor, the one thing I will say is that we did bid our project last week, uh, the River Road Phase 1 project. We got favorable bids, so we're still evaluating those. Um, um, hopefully look to award something. Thank you. I have one question. Thank you. Have a question. On the list where it says begin construction complete, does that mean, for instance, the traffic signal at Colony Hall, does that mean by November of next year we will have, the plan is we'd have a functioning traffic signal there? Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's okay, the goal. So the, the I just wanted to make sure that's what I was going to make sure. Okay. 
Council. Um, we just Council. wanted to report um, out on a closed session oh. that there was uh, nothing to report, no action was taken, direction was given to staff on all three matters. Other than that, we're all good. Thank you. Thank you for not reminding me. For not reminding me. Kevin? Kevin? Daniel? Council Member? Uh, nothing other than as usual. Thank you to the members of the public for being here. Uh, we enjoy the direction here to listen to us. Councilman Parks. Nothing to report. Yuka. Yuka. Vice Mayor Zuber. Vice Mayor Zuber. Are these still? No. Are these the same things you got emailed? Same things you got emailed. Okay. 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 So nothing else. Nothing else. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Okay, Stacy, we're close. Okay, Stacy, we're close.